dirty. And it's getting deep in here. We got another tough article ahead. So I figured we'd glove up for this one. Because you never know what sort of crap you're gonna run into every time you flip one of these pages. Wow, I lost my voice. I'm so excited every time you flip one of these pages. So, whew. Since you're still here or you're just starting, you need to know that there's another video on functional analysis. So now I'm basically going to tell you that it's pointless. <laughs> so go watch that one first before you watch this one. And you can watch all of my other videos because this is an FA on steroids or minus the steroids or whatever you want to think about. In fact, I don't know. Like, I can't even make a jokes about Slanton and Hanley and Ra Ra Raftery. Raftery? Raftery. I shouldn't be making jokes about people's names, but I can't resist. So anyway, uh, this is part of uh, Jessica Slanton's probably your dissertation. I'm not 100% sure. Could be a master's thesis. It's a heck of an awesome article. Um, so interview informed functional analyses, a comparison of synthesized and isolated components. Uh, largely based on Hans Hanley's work in the 24, uh, the 24, the 2014 canonical article from Hanley about the ISCA, which I I ISCA, I guess, I don't know, I I ISCA, I-I-S-C-A, which we'll talk about the I-I-S-C-A. Interview informed synthesized, hold on. Interview informed, oh, that's a lot of, <laughs> interview informed synthesized something analysis. What the? Brad, what's the C in that? <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, bear with us as we dig up what the ISCA is. This is really embarrassing, and I'm going to keep it in the video because I just want you to show that no one's perfect. All right. Um, component. Component? No. Con. I can't read my own handwriting. It's contingency. <laughs> of all words in behavior analysis to forget. <laughs> contingency. So the ISCA, sorry Dr. Hanley, sorry probably Dr. Slanton at this point. Um, the ISCA is the interview informed synthesized contingency analysis, which no oh shit. Right? You're basically trying to figure out the function of a behavior issue. Um, and that is what you would do, is look at the contingencies. Uh, it's some days. Um, it's the gloves, folks. It's just the gloves. That's all I have to say. All right. So this one's 2017. So take a look at the shizzle. Um, take a look at Slanton's article. Um, I'll post the reference down there um, so you can look it up yourself and buy a copy. All right. So anyway, here we go. So it's all about F.A. Kinda. It's about a modified version of F.A. Because we can look back and talk about... These are kind of sweaty. That's weird. Um, so we can look back and talk about um, Awada's functional analysis. Now, keep in mind that Awada 82, Awada 94, all of these articles and, and a whole bunch in between there, not just from Awada, but from all sorts of researchers and tons and tons of people doing this in practice have talked about the value of functional assessment or analysis. Um, there's tons of different types of functional analyses. I even had some of them written down. I don't know if I can read them here. Um, there's, uh, I don't know, the traditional FA, there's precursor FAs, there's latency FAs. Um, there's all sorts of different types of functional analysis that's been looked at over the years. Uh, but one of the benefits of the functional analysis is also one of its drawbacks. By identifying so crystal clearly what the different functions are for that client's problem behavior, you might be putting your blinders on to some bigger issues, which might be that maybe it's more than one thing that's reinforcing the behavior, or maybe it's more than one behavior that you're dealing with, right? Maybe it's a series of behaviors, maybe it's a chain. Right? Maybe behavior A, a precursor behavior, comes always before the second behavior. So what if you can uh, work with the first behavior before you get to the problem behavior? So anyway, the ISCA allows you to pick up on some of those things, and it, it's pretty cool. So basically, so many types of FAs out there, describes a large set of variations on traditional FA. So there, I found this article really awesome because it goes. It, there's a ton of amazing references in there. They, she covers some really cool stuff in terms of if you want some good uh, good background on what FA is and the different types of it, it's really well covered. Um, so let's get into the ISCA though. So the ISCA kind of switches the gears. Instead of just this immediate direct observation, you get into um, open-ended interviews with people that know about the client's behavior and you ask questions about what they think. You get really pointed. These things can take like 30, 40 minutes to do these interviews and you do them from multiple sources. You don't just go to one person. You go to multiple people and you kind of you kind of synthesize all of that into one and go, all right, what are the different things, triggers for the kiddo, and I know triggers discriminative stimuli, but when you're talking in an interview, a looser interview form, you, you got to just try to get the information however you can. You translate it how you want. 
so anyway, you get all this information, you figure out what probably is maintaining the behavior based on these things, then you figure out um, under what condition flies under what conditions it happens um, usually and, and what triggers and what setting events and all these sort of things happening and you're getting all this information and then you're going to take and instead of doing four different conditions you're going to do two you're going to synthesize these things and using the multi-element design again you're going to synthesize this stuff um, all the different reinforcers right the potential reinforcers so you might put an attention condition and um, and even an escape condition depending on the scenario or attention and uh, automatic you could do all sorts of things that, to combine them together because it seems like this behavior is maintained by multiple things according to all these people you've interviewed Anyway, and then you also, so I'm looking at that, That's so you're kind of um, combining the, it's too hot, I can't deal. Um, you're, you're combining the um, establishing operations kind of into one, and you also look at broader response topographies. So you're not just looking at the one response, you're looking at multiple responses and the topographies of those responses, precursor behaviors, things that always come right before. Like I make, I do a certain thing with my hands before I make a specific point, right? So is this... A precursor behavior to me making a specific point. Maybe it is, but you could you could maybe work with one of those behaviors or both of them um, in these types of settings instead of just identifying the one self-injurious behavior. So maybe you're counting the other thing too. So anyway, multi-element designs we've already talked about. Um, she had two studies in this article. First one was just comparing whether or not um, you can differentiate with the ISCA versus a traditional FA. That's where it's cool. They did both. Now, they did the FA actually on the same kiddos, but they did it second. Right? So they did that FA second. So the benefit of the carryover effect of learning the information that you've learned from the ISCA carries over into the FA. They gave the FA the double, like, we're going to give you an extra bonus of, su of success here. Um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to give them the bonus rather than giving the ISCA the bonus, which is really cool when you look at the results. Why? Because out of the nine kids, they were able to differentiate what the, f the function was, relatively speaking, for all nine. All nine. But for the traditional FA, not so much. They got four out of nine, which is less than 50%. For those of you that don't remember that nine divided by two is four and a half, and you can't have a half of a child in this scenario, so it's less than half. So less than half of the clients were uh, um, were differentiated in using a standard FA, whereas the ISCA nailed it nine out of nine times. That alone is pretty awesome. But she had study two. Now, keep in mind, this is a 2017 article, 28 to the 2014 article talks about the development of the ISCA and it's already singing its praises and it's awesome, it's all that stuff, but this one takes it a step further and it goes, which interventions were better based on the data? So based on that data, now you know what's differentiated. So they went ahead and developed interventions based on the ISCA or based on the traditional FA. And ISCA, guess what? All four, they worked with four kids. So all four kids with the ISCA, all right, um, the interventions were successful at reducing behavior. All four, I think. Yeah, um, which is awesome. But for two of those kids, it was more effective than the FA. The FA was effective for all of them, too. Okay, um, so equally, there was my, my mouth actually makes sense. It probably doesn't sound like it the way I'm talking. Uh, the FA and the uh, ISCA were um, equally effective for two out of the four kiddos. All right, clients. Um, and the FA was more effective, or the, the ISCA was more effective than the FA for two of them. So, but all four were helped by the ISCA. So the point is, is that, wow, you got a new technique here. And that technique is arguably more valuable in the field than an FA is. Arguably. Um, science changes slow. And the water is pretty, pretty big, you know, and, and that FA procedure is awesome. Um, and here's a new one kind of popping up and that's good. We like that. And the data seems to be really promising. So I want you to keep that in mind. Um, learn about the ISCA. I think it's really important to learn about. You can pull the journal articles on it. Um, Hanley's the uh, primary researcher behind it, Greg, Gregory P. Hanley. Um, but I think the last couple of points is that behavior is complex. EOs are complex. You know, it's not just one thing that might signal behavior to to start. Um, and behaviors um, combine, right? So you get these chains. The behavior's messy. It's con kind of compound stimuli, compound behaviors, all sorts of stuff. And ultimately speaking, you have also situations where reinforcers may or may not be as crystal clear as what you think. Sometimes multiple things reinforce the same behavior. ISCA, it's cool, it's quicker, it's based in the real world, it's not just straight up experimental. It is experimental, but it's not just straight up rigid as much as an FA. But it seems to produce the same amount of data, and you could do more with it. Arguably, according to this author. So, anyway, go out and read. See ya!